mankind history dates back to almost 10000 years we are lucky as living in the era where there is treatment available for almost all the ailments but about 200 years back rest was the only treatment for respiratory patients you will be surprised to know that alcohol and opium were used as therapeutic modalities in that era it was also believed that removal of bad blood helped respiratory patients this is not just an ordinary hookah but it is the world's first inhaler the smoke of datura was the first known bronchodilator for asthma patients dr sims observed that the tribals living near madras used to take hookah with datura leaves whenever they had some respiratory problems like asthma in the year 1820 Dr. Sims took this idea from Madras tribals to England. It remained the only treatment for almost one century as Potter's asthma cure. French doctor Dr. René Lenac invented the stethoscope. Soon the stethoscope became the prime tool for the doctors in the diagnosis of respiratory ailments. Dr. René was asthmatic since childhood and died at a young age of 45 by tuberculosis which was incurable in those days. In 1840, the famous surgeon, John Hutchinson discovered an instrument to measure the vital capacity and it was called spirometer. TB menace was spreading and a bright German physician, Hermann Bremer, contracted TB. He lost all hopes of life and in frustration, he went to the Himalayas. Interestingly, his condition improved and he established the first sanatorium in 1863 and thereafter the era of sanatorium care started in 1920s the first sanatorium of india was established in kasoli and the second was built in ajmer rajasthan in 1882 robert koch discovered mycobacterium tuberculosis with the newly discovered instrument called microscope then came the historic discovery of Wilhelm Röntgen. In the year 1895, he discovered the X-ray and got the first Nobel Prize for Physics in 1901. BCG vaccine was discovered by Albert Kamet and Kamil Korin. They initially did a trial on cows, but the problem was to try it on humans. So they decided to try it on their own children. And in 1921, they announced their discovery. During the middle of the 20th century, nearly 70 years back, tuberculosis reached near epidemic proportions in the rapidly urbanizing and industrializing societies of Europe and North America. The havoc of the disease can be estimated with this death toll of a European city during the Second World War. During the 56 months of war, there were fewer casualties from war than the dreaded disease TB. In those days, interesting therapies evolved like phrenicotomy, lobectomy, thoracoplasty and putting ping pong balls in the diseased parts of the lung. In 1944, Selman Waxman and Jorgen Lemon discovered streptomycin and PAS. Imagine a world before antibiotic. It was a world where bacteria were beating mankind. After decades of early attempts by scientists to develop antibiotics, bacteriologist Sir Alexander Fleming made a world-changing breakthrough when he accidentally discovered penicillin in 1928. Penicillin saved millions of people all over the world, suffering from pneumonia and other respiratory diseases and is still a pioneer drug. In 1958, research carried out at TRC Madras showed that domiciliary treatment was equally effective as sanatorium care. After this research, a paper published by Wallace Fox, the whole concept of treatment of TB changed. It shifted from sanatorium care to domiciliary care. All sanatoriums got deserted and doctors treating TB became jobless. motivated the pulmonologists to move from TB to other diseases like asthma and COPD. 
now the question is how to keep a perfect coordination among research, patient care and evolution of the technology. Two leading societies in the country, Indian Chess Society and National College of Chest Physicians are playing a vital role in this regard. Until 1999, the annual conference of pulmonologists was a dichotomous. There were two annual events held on two separate occasions each year by the two national bodies. This would essentially make it extremely difficult for an interested worker in the discipline of the industry to choose which particular event to attend or support, each one lasting for three days. Stalwarts of two associations such as late Professor C. N. Devanayagan and late Dr. M. M. Singh representing the popular sentiments of chest physicians of India expressed their desire for unification of two bodies or at least one annual conference. Herculean efforts of Dr. J. C. Suri motivated power centers of two organizations Dr. S. N. Gaur and Dr. Rohini Chokhle. Opportunities were provided during deliberations at ICS conference at Varanasi in 1997 and later in NCCP at the Deppur conference in 1998. Dr. J.K. Samaria, Dr. S.K. Kathiar, Dr. N.K. Jain, Dr. Vrindra Singh and Dr. S.K. Luharia were in favor of a joint conference by both the bodies. In this regard, Dr. J.C. Suri can be termed as the pioneer of NAPCOM. Sometimes a short walk down memory lane is all it takes to appreciate where you are today. Ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to let you stroll back and let you relive those precious and unforgettable moments. NAPCOM started in 1999. Before 1999, Conferences for medical college academicians presenting their research work or disseminating their knowledge through lectures. First time workshops were organized where practitioners learnt new skills required in clinical practice. Sleep, PFT, ventilator care and allergy testing workshops were attended by large number of practitioners. Attendance also increased from around 500 to 1500. Industry participation also increased from 15 to 20 stalls to 40 to 50 stalls. NAPCON 2000 In the millennium year 2000, the conference was held at the industrial city Kanpur. It was organized under the dynamic leadership of Dr. S.K. Katyar from GSBM Medical College. This was an excellent academic fest which also had satellite symposium at Khajuraho. The social events included performances by Bollywood sensation Sunidhi Chauhan and Vinod Rathod. For the first time in the history of medical conferences, a laser show was also held. NAPCOM 2001 was held in the city of dreams, financial, commercial and entertainment capital of India, Mumbai. The organizing secretary was Dr. Rohini Chogle. The grandeur and scientific content at the conference was unmatched. NAPCON 2002 NAPCON 2002 was hosted in the pink city, Jaipur. Leading dignitaries including presidents of ATS and ERS and editors of Blue Journal were among 38 faculties attending from abroad. For the first time, voting pads were used to make the conference interactive and interesting. In order to boost the basic research in the country, NAPCON awards were given in 10 categories and free papers representing original research were kept during prime time. Bollywood star Shan was the highlight of the entertainment. NAPCON 2003 Held in Coimbatore under the guidance of then ICS President and Organizing Secretary, Dr. T. Mohan Kumar witnessed excellent scientific sessions. It was attended by speakers from abroad and for the first time, live workshops in ventilation and bronchoscopy were held. NAPCON 2004 
lectured at Ahmedabad, Dr. R. N. Solanki was driving force behind the great conference. NAPCON 2005 was organized by Dr. Dhimin Ganguly and Dr. A. G. Ghoshal. The concept of Flexi Lunch with continuing scientific program and electronic lamp were introduced for the first time. One particular delegate had an unfortunate myocardial infarction. He not only survived the fatal accident but also became president and has a record of attending all NAPCONs. NAPCON 2006 was held at Nagpur in the month of November under the leadership of Dr. B. O. Tairi. The conference was a landmark in the history of NAPCON and it is still remembered by delegates. NAPCON 2007 was organized by Professor Dr. S. K. Jindal as the chairperson and Dr. Dheeraj Gupta as organizing secretary. 1,800 delegates from different parts of India participated in the same. Over the years, NAPCON has become popular not only in India but also the world over. Now faculty from American and European countries such as ACCP, ATS, ERS have also started attending NAPCON. A number of delegates from SARC countries are also attending the conference. NAPCON 2008 Dr. Rajendra Prasad organized NAPCON 2008 in Lucknow. It was a huge show involving 300 faculties delivering their expertise in four halls. It was mainly managed by residents. NAPCON 2009 Dr. C. Ravindran was the dynamic organizing secretary of NAPCON 2009 at Calicut. The inauguration ceremony was marked with traditional arts of Kerala. The scientific program, the ambience, the mood and hospitality were appreciated by the faculty and delegates. 80 scientific papers were presented. NAPCON 2010 the conference was organized by Dr. P. D. Motiani at the Sun City, Jodhpur. And star attraction was workshop for two days. Research achievements were acknowledged with awards in free papers and posters. Free download and Wi-Fi facility were made available. NAPCON 2011 Dr. Vijayan and Dr. Raj Kumar organized NAPCON 2011 at Delhi. This conference kept high standards of academic deliberations with minimal expenditure. It led to a historic saving of 1 crore rupees for the society. With these savings, ICS started new activities such as fellowship to young chest physicians, research projects and workshops. NAPCON 2012 which was organized by Dr. Narayan Mishra in Bhuvaneshwar Despite shortage of hotels in the city, it was organized nicely. NAPCON 2013 was conducted with the team A Paradigm Shift in Respiratory Medicine by Dr. Vijay Lakshmi Thanashekaran. It was conceived to create an awareness of the increasing mortality and morbidity of respiratory diseases due to environmental changes. NAPCON 2014 was held at Aligarh and Agra under the able leadership of Dr. Rakesh Bhargav. There were nine workshops which were attended enthusiastically by one and all. You will be happy to know that the ICS journal Lung India, which was not even ranked before the year 2010, Scopus ranked it as 93rd in the country 
in 2014. NAPCON 2015 This year NAPCON is back in the pink city. A city known for its hospitality, culture, heritage and architecture. Dr. Virendra Singh and Dr. M.K. Jain and the team has put in tremendous efforts to make this conference a milestone. And now the good part is, every ICS member would be ERS member as well and that too free of cost. Hats off to ICS Secretary Dr. J.K. Samaria and the survived delegate of Kolkata Conference Dr. Sabir. The theme of this year's conference is, smoke free air is a basic human right. Two young chest physicians have designed smoke a lung to be used by us to motivate our patients for cessation and children for never use commitment. On behalf of organizing committee NAPCON 2015, I welcome you all in the Pink City, Jaipur. Life is a mix of problems and solutions. When we treat a patient of tuberculosis successfully, we feel pleasure. On contrary, when we fail in treating a patient of advanced idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, we are sad and frustrated. An itch to tackle this frustration leads to research and inventions discoveries. Number of ideas coming in my mind, your mind and mind of Dr. Ganesh Raghu are equal. The only difference is he pursues his ideas well while we ignore ourselves thinking we are not capable of making an original discovery. By mere adopting two simple principles, one can become a great inventor. One, pen down these forgettable ideas. And two, never to ignore yourself or ourselves. Pursue the research. Friends, NAPCON provides a platform to appreciate your research. Wish you good luck, participate with full enthusiasm.